good idea for him to say that he wasn't an applicant, that uh, he understood that the president was looking for somebody outside of New York City. He wanted somebody in the West that had some judicious experience. Let me go back over that. Wanted somebody outside of New York City. Yeah, for the, for the securities. Uh, uh, that's right. That, change that's right. And he wanted, and preferred someone from the West. And somebody from the West. And he wanted someone that had legislative experience. Legislative and judicial. Ju and judicial experience. experience. And a good legal background. And that he didn't know anything about it until the FBI started investigating it. And the FBI yeah. made a very thorough check. Now, I've got the FBI report in front of me. And it's a perfect report. There's not yeah, one critical thing. God damn thing. This is a good man. Now, let me tell you, uh, Frank Church says, uh, write this down. Uh, I just, uh, this is confidential, but you can use it. Frank Church says he's known Budge for many years. They're on opposite sides of the fence, but Budge enjoys, quote, an excellent reputation in the state of Idaho. He has never heard anything of a derogatory nature concerning his character, his loyalty or his associate. That's right. Now, right. Jordan is a Republican senator. I've never yeah. talked to him, but he says the same thing. I won't go over it. Yeah. Harding says, he's one of those some bitches stirred up a lot of this, that he has known Budge since 60 when he defeated him in election to office, that although he disagrees with Budge as far as their political beliefs are concerned, he considers Mr. Budge a personal friend who is an exceptionally fine man. He stated that Mr. Budge's integrity character, reputation, loyalty, and associates are above question, and he recommended him for a position of trust and responsibility. Now, that's the man that defeated him. Yeah. Compton I. White, he said that he does not know him by, but by reputation, and he is a high-type professional man of excellent personal habits. Yeah. Then Frank Bow, then Errol B. Smith, Justice, sir. Yeah. Uh, John Rhodes, William Springer, Tick Forrester, William Tuck, yeah. John B. Williams, 13 other associates. All of these advise that he's a loyal American whose character, reputation, associates are above question. Those acquainted with the other members of his family advise they're all reputable persons. He was described as a very capable individual, a very solid citizen. They recommended him for a position of trust and confidence. Now, I think he can very well say that he doesn't know anything about this back stuff maneuvering they're talking about. First he knows about was the uh, president had this FBI made. He wasn't an applicant for anything. He was on the bench doing his job. And the president called him into his office and said that he wanted a man that had legislative experience, had served in the service, and had judicial experience, and asked him if he'd accept yeah. the job. And he said, well, if the president wanted him to, he'd do it. And that's I'll all his. I'll keep clear out of it. Uh, well, that's that's what I'd... I'm not going to hesitate. Uh, I, I, that doesn't make a difference, but I think any senators you can talk to, you ought to do it. I've called John Sparkman. He told me he'd already talked to you, but he's going to help us. You know something? I just called him because he and I are friends. Yeah, he's a good man, and he's your friend, and he's going to help. Yeah. And I told Walter Jenkins to call some of the rest of them, but that's a pretty liberal committee, Douglas and uh, Foxmire, and it's the same group that gave that me... I long of Missouri kind of thing. Well, Walter's calling him now and calling Willis Robertson, too. Uh, you ought to see it's your Republicans there. I called Dirksen. I went over the FBI report with Dirksen, and he's he's strong for him. He'll be right there. So let's don't let them hurt the boy. They tried to hurt John Connolly, you know, when he was Secretary of the Navy. They tried to butcher him up. They can't do it. All right. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Could I just ask you? Yes, sir. We're going to get your civil rights bill. Good. So you can sign it on July 4th. But let us get away July 2 or 3. Well, if you get some of those things passed out of there, don't well, we? We can't. Now, wait just a minute. I don't know what you're talking about, but uh, you say to me, do the uh, poverty bill. You can't get that rule. You can't possibly do it. Why don't you meet with your people in the morning and give us Republicans a kind of a generous sort of a thing? We got 17 boys on that uh, resolutions committee. We got Mel Laird, the chairman. We got Charlie Goodell in New York. God, he's been in your corner more times than you can shake a stick at. And we got uh, a Glenn Lipscomb of California is helping him. And I gotta go out there. I gotta go out there. Clarence Brown's gotta go out there, Mr. President. Don't barrel these people to keep us here that week. 
Well, Charlie, you know, when they let us get out the day before the convention, I don't want to keep you. I'd love for them to all go out. And the only way, you, only thing you got to do is just go on and act on these things you got. Now, you know that you well, ought to do it. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I don't know. We got 31 proposals at one I house or the other. I understand. Now, wait a minute, Mr. President. I appreciate your calling me. And I don't want to detain you because you're a damn sight more important than I am. But let me just tell you this, my friend. We get your civil rights bill passed, and you can't do it without us. Understand? You sign that up July 4th. Give us the next two weeks off in the House. I'm not talking about the Senate. For our convention, we got 17 guys on that resolutions committee. You can't pass anything that next week. I'll guarantee you you can't. Charlie, why don't you let us go on? Why, why don't you let us pick these things up? Let the majority decide it. Well, I'll let you... Now, God damn it, Mr. President, I'll uh, do a few of those things. But you ain't gonna curry any favor with me. I might as well be blunt about it. Uh, making us stay here when we got 20, 30 guys from the House wanting to go to our convention. What are you gonna take up the week before our convention? I'd like to take up every one of these 31 that we need to pass. <laughs> well, we got four weeks be between our convention and yours. If you want to keep the Rules Committee in session, that's okay. I, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, I think a lot of these things ought to be voted on, Mr. President. But I'm telling you right now, when you, I tell you, I'm, I'm going to be a little tough to get along with. If uh, you keep us right here, uh, and you've got a lot of guys on your side going to be tough to get along with, on the House side. Well, Charlie, don't you think I ought to try to get my program passed? Yes, you do. But I don't think you... If you were in my place, if you were in my place and you had a house and meets on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday... You're not going to do it the week after the 4th of July, and ahead of our convention. I don't think you are. And uh, I'm, I was about to call you, Mr. President. Well, do it between now and the 4th of July. Get these things passed. You ought to, you ought to hold up my poverty bill. That's, that's a good bill. There's no reason why you ought to keep a majority from beating it. You can beat it. Go on and beat it. But uh, you ought to hold it up. You ought to give me a fair shake and give me a chance to vote on it. Uh, I've got it in my budget. I cut my budget a billion under last year. Wait, let me talk to you in just a minute. You want the civil rights bill through. You want the tax bill through, and I helped you do it. And God damn it, did I help you in civil rights? Yeah, you sure did. You helped Kennedy. Well, I, you, right. you, you agreed with him. Kennedy and helped you. We're trying. Now wait just a minute, my friend. Then you helped yourself. Of course, you all want civil rights as much as we do. I believe it's a nonpartisan bill. No, I don't no, think no, it's a Johnson no, no, bill. No, you're going to get all the political advantage. We aren't no, going to get a no, goddamn bill. No, no, no. Wait just a minute. Now, we got a lot of things in that bill. But I don't know what the hell the Senate put in there. Maybe we ought to kind of take a little look at it. Well, maybe you ought to. I'm not oh, saying that you ought to. Now, wait a minute, Mr. President. I'm just looking at it hard for it. And once in a while, I can get hard for it. Well, you wouldn't want to go to your convention without civil rights, though, would you? You know, as a matter of fact, if you scratch me very deep, Mr. President... Well, I wouldn't scratch I you at all, because I, I don't want to pet you. Just minute, wait just a minute. <laughs> if I had my way... I'd let you folks be fussing with that goddamn thing before your convention instead of ours. But I'm perfectly willing to give you the right to sign that thing on July 4th. Now, I think you're taking advantage of an Independence Day thing that ain't right. But uh, that's not for me to say. I don't know what you're talking about. You want to sign this? Uh, I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't, I, I haven't said... July 4th, well, the no. papers have been full of it. I haven't said a word about it. Nobody's asked me anything about it. And I'll tell you something. If you sign it that day, I ain't going to be there, because I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm going. Mr. President, I wish you what you'd do. And uh, God knows I... Look, you got a tax bill, you got a civil rights bill, you got a hell of a lot of other things coming along. Don't press us too, God. I, uh, I'll do 
just about anything I can for you. Well, go on and report my poverty bill. Quit holding it up in that damn now, wait room. Wait just a minute. Let, we'll get that. They've had that all debated. Right, They've debated it. They, they wait, delayed it. If, if you try to shove that... I'm not trying to shove. Hell, I've been trying for six months to even get a vote on it. Yeah, they Mr. held it up over there. I never saw such a spectacle. Every man, they were bitter and mean and vicious and uh, in, the, in the labor committee. And then they got it over there, and now they're up testifying and rule. Now, let's just go back over a little bit. You've got a great important thing called the Civil Rights Bill with a hell of a lot of far-reaching amendments. I'm sorry I'm holding you up this much, but uh, I'm just going to do it. A hell of a lot of amendments. You want me to buy those without uh, any chance in the House to look them over. Well, Mr. President, I guess maybe I'll do it. But, Jesus Christ, don't push me too far. Now, give me a little chance. I haven't pushed you at all, my friend. I, I haven't even discussed no. it with you. No, I understand. Have I? I understand. I, Never. Well, look, no, no. I haven't even asked it. I haven't no, discussed no, it with them. No, no, no I just no, let you all no, run no, your no, own okay. show. Now, look, Mr. Fred, let me go back over. I was you discussing something else. I wasn't talking about legislation. You haven't pushed me. Hmm? You haven't pushed no, me. No, I, I sure don't want to, Charlie. I won't be. No, I, I want to pass the Civil Rights Bill. And let me tell you what I want to do. I want to pass, I'm going to help you do it. The Civil Rights Bill as it passed the Senate. Understand? You give me a rule on my poverty bill, let me vote on that, Charlie. Oh, wait just a minute. I'll give you a rule in due time, but don't press okay. me. I'm not I'm pressing you. I'm God just, I'm, damn it, Mr. I'm President. not pressing you any more than you're pressing me, my friend. I'm just making a statement. Please, I'm telling you about things I'm interested in, and you want to, I think, yeah. be helpful. All right, in due time, I'll give you a... But if you okay. keep me here... I got a deal, Mom. Well, my day, Charlie, I don't want to sure enough try to get it acted on the Senate, and they don't want to go into working on the bill and the hearings until we act on it in the House. And you could Mr. do that. Mr. You could let me have that rule could tomorrow I, if you wanted to. Just could I look here in old Senate hand? Yeah, an old yeah. House hand, too. Wait a minute, and you're a Halleck. An old Halleck man. All right, and you're a Halleck <laughs> man, and I'm a Johnson. <laughs> Well, well, give me a little rule up there in the morning. I'm glad you called me in, <laughs> because, my friend, I just wish I was right there with you. Well, we'll get together this week. Something. We'll get together this week. Mr. President. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'll call you this week. Guys, we'll... wait a minute. Us guys in the house have carried the heart for you. Well, you call them up and tell them to give me a rule on that poverty bill so I can no, get no, it. I've got it over in the Senate, no, no, you see. No, wait just a minute. I ain't going to give you... And it ruined the goddamn poverty bill until I know what the hell we're doing. Well, well, what can I tell you? Uh, how can I tell you what we're doing? I'll tell you anything I know. I'll call you any day this week that you're free, and we'll sit down and talk together. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye.